November 21st, 1990. This is our champion, Stan Newman, and he returns with $112,480. This is a housewife, Ilsa Khan, and here's an attorney, Glenn Schwartz. Stan is the champion. Ilsa and Glenn, you are the challengers. And now, here is your master of the challenge, Dick Clark. Hey! What a Wednesday it will be. What is this, November 21st, no less. Stan, how does it feel to have a, what is it, $112,480 now that you didn't have a day or two ago? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to feel good, though. Now, the spoilers are here. Ilsa and Glenn appear to be reasonably nice-looking, good people and all, but they're going to take you uh, real fast and hard. Let, if them can. Try. Let them try. Let them try. Let them try. Sounds like a <laughs> competitor. Uh, because, of course, the player who uh, earns the most money today will go on to our ultimate challenge round at today's uh, end of the show. And at that point, we'll have one question. It will be worth $10,000. We're going to go for a little toss-up question here. We'll start you all off at $200 right now. All of the money you earn today goes into your Citibank Visa account. The cash and the benefits in that account are yours to keep. Here is your $100 toss-up question for control of the game. She's back. Name the female politician who says she'll run again for mayor of Chicago. Glenn? Jane Byrne. Jane Byrne is right. You've got control of the game. All right, let's take a look at the categories. And they are, let's go to the movies. Fish and Cheeps, The Jackson 5, Fun and Games, Sights for Sore Eyes and Pseudonyms. And uh, Glenn, I think you have the choice. Let's try pseudonyms, Dick. All right, let's check them out for $150. We have actors, musicians, and authors up there. Select the one you want to play and make a wager, please. All right, two of you going for the actors for $150. Ilsa and Glenn for $150. What's your stage name if you started your career with an acrobatic troupe and were first known as Archie Leach? Glenn? Cary Grant. Cary Grant is right for $200, Stan. At age 13, he recorded his first hit single. What's the professional name of the musician born Steveland Morris? Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder is right for $200. And Stan, you've got control of the board. Lights for sore eyes, please. All right, check them out. For $150, we have baseball parks, depressed areas, and sacred rivers at $250. First wager's in. There we go. Yeah, all right. Uh, Glenn and Stan, for $200, name the area near the Mojave Desert that contains the lowest spot in North America. Stan? Death Valley. Death Valley is right for $250, Ilsa. Hindus consider the Ganges the most sacred river in India. The Ganges empties into what large bay? Bay of Bengal. Bay of Bengal is right for $250. Ilsa, we've got four subjects left over there. Which one would you like? Ilsa? Oh, I have to pick, let's see. Um, I'll pick fun and games, because I'm having fun. Fun and games. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun. It really is, yeah. Sorry, right. for 150 card games, board games, and TV games. Higher the value, the tougher the question. And everybody has a question this time. For $150, Ilsa, in what card game does a combination of the Jack of Diamonds and the Queen of Spades score? 40 points. Oh, Pinochle. You're right. Wow. <laughs> I think that was a guess. My I'm not goodness, sure. This, this right. is fun. Stand for $200. <laughs> what game would you be playing if you, let, if you left a blot while bearing off and had to go back to the bar? Oh, uh -huh. backgammon? Backgammon is right. <laughs> Glenn, for 250 On what TV game show might you see contestants strapped to a revolving wheel while they try to identify music videos presented by Ken Ober. And TV show. <laughs> it's remote control is the answer to that one. Stan, you have the choice of the last uh, three categories. Let's go to the movies. All right, check them out. We have animated adventures, whimsical dramas, and foreign films from $150 to $250. All right, for $150, Glenn and Ilsa, in one current film, Tom Selleck is quickly down under. In a new Disney release, what animated characters go down under? Ilsa. Fievel. No, I'm sorry, and it was The Rescuers was the answer we wanted. That'll cost you $150. Stand for $200. In the current film, Waiting for the Light, a faked miracle is instigated by two tots and a zany Aunt Zena, who's played uh, by what zany actress? McLean. Shirley McLean is right for $200. Stand. Fish and Cheeps at the Jackson Five. Well, the spirit of wordplay, fish and cheeps. Fish and cheeps. All right, for $150, freshwater fish, saltwater fish, and fresh, salty birds. <laughs> Interesting combination, like a wager. 
All right, everybody's going for the fish there, the fresh water, that is. Doubles the value, that makes that one worth uh, $300. You're all three going for this. What mainly freshwater fish has species called cutthroat, golden, and rainbow? Glenn. Trout. Trout is right. Now, how's your fish and bird knowledge? You want to go further? I'm not going to. Not going to touch it. All right, we'll go uh, at this point to the last question, which is on the Jackson 5. And let me uh, turn up the questions for you. The $150 one deals with Michael and family, the big break, and Michael solos. Check your knowledge of the Jacksons and place your wager. All right, two of you going for the $150 question on the family. And Michael, this remark, I'm sorry, it's, it's in Stan. This remarkable family exploded onto the music scene from what hometown in Indiana? Ilsa? Gary. Gary is right for $150. Glenn? For $200, the Jackson 5's first album was released in 1969. Now, according to its title, what Motown artist presented the Jackson 5? Um, Stevie Wonder? No, that's wrong, but Ilsa knows the answer. And she, no? no? Diana Ross. <laughs> yeah, Diana, all right, somebody over there. No, yeah. The album was called Diana Ross Presents the Jackson 5. In any case, the score stands uh, not as close as it might be. Stands a little bit out in front with Ilsa snuggling up behind with uh, $600. Glenn, you got to do catching up, and we'll do that in the second half of the game when we double the value of all of the questions right here on The Challenge. news and current events questions are verified by Newsweek magazine. And now let's get back to the challengers. Are right, we ready to play the second half of this affair here? You do some volunteer work, Ilsa? Yes, I do. I've wor been working with the Senior Citizen Hotline referral so that if a senior needs to make a housing change, we can keep them in their neighborhood Terrific. and near things that are familiar. We thank you for that. Stan, who's your biggest fan? Oh, my mother and father, Claire and Jerry in Delray Beach, Florida. They were astounded to re watch me read my first words at two and a half and bought me my first almanac at age 10. And they've been Look amazed ever <laughs> since, I think. <laughs> this man is a, is a fountain of uh, strange and wonderful information. <laughs> I'm curious though, Glenn, we had the fish category over there and somebody told me you're a fish collector. Yes, I, uh, I'm an attorney uh, back in New York and I also like to keep tropical fish. And tropical. That's why I got the fresh water, but I was a little nervous about the salt water. Uh, fair <laughs> enough. Folks, we're ready to start the second half of play. There's one thing I want to remind you about. The winner of today's game will be going after the ultimate challenge today and that one question will be worth $10,000. Let's take a look at these subjects over here. We have Boston, Massachusetts, on and off Broadway, showbiz newsmakers, Global Geography, Bad Ideas for Novels, I don't know what that is, Hot Off the Wire, and uh, you've got a choice. I'm going to pick Global Geography. Global Geography for $300. We have cities, countries at four, and capitals at 500. Please think it over and make a wager. And uh, we'll go with you first, Ilsa, for $300. What U.S. city is situated where the Allegheny and Monongahela rivers join to form the Ohio River? I believe that's Pittsburgh. You believe correctly. You know your geography. Stan and Glenn, for $500, South Africa can actually claim three capital cities. There's the judicial capital, the legislative capital, and the administrative capital in what city? Glenn? Johannesburg. No, I'm sorry. It's Pretoria was the correct answer. That's a costly one. Uh, $500 in cost. Ilsa, where do we go now? Uh, let me see. Let's try Boston, Massachusetts. All right, let's check it out and see what we have. We have its historic attractions, its buildings, and its politics. Three to $500 wager coming up. All right, everybody gets a question this time. Ilsa, we'll start with you for $300 at Boston's Charlestown Naval Yard. You can board the historic ship known as Old Ironsides. What's the official name of that ship? Goodness, the monitor, the Constitution. Uh, judge? No, I'm afraid not. Oh. Uh, she's a, you, you started your other mm. answer. Constitution was right, but the other answer came out first. I'm sorry to say, stand for $400. From the steeple of Boston's Christ Church, lanterns were hung to warn that the British were coming. What's the more popular name for Christ Church? The Old North Church. That is correct for 400. Glenn for five. <laughs> Glenn. Name the colorful Boston mayor who served as an inspiration for the novel, The Last Hurrah. Curly. Curly is right. It came out just in the nick of time. 
Glenn, you have the choice of uh, the remaining four subjects over there. Let's try Hot Off the Wire. Hot Off the Wire for $300 box office news, new novels, and politics. And if you will, uh, we'll go for the box office news. First of all, Ilsa and Stan for $300. Recently, the movie Ghost became this year's top grossing box office hit by surpassing what other romantic comedy? Nobody wanted to touch it? Pretty woman yeah. is the answer. Yeah, it's a good, good, probably one to stay away from. <laughs> Glenn, for five hundred dollars, uh, Nancy Kassebaum, re-elected on November sixth, was the first woman elected to the U.S. Senate who did not succeed her husband. What midwestern state does Senator Kassebaum represent? Kansas. Kansas is right for five hundred dollars. <laughs> Glenn, three subjects: Broadway novels, newsmakers. What'll it be? Showbiz newsmakers. Showbiz newsmakers for three hundred dollars. Exercisers, rockers, and swingers. It's up to you folks to make the choice. Everybody going for the exercisers. Doubles the value of all of the categories. Three hundred dollars becomes six hundred now on exercisers. All three. Exercise queen Jane Fonda went shopping for an engagement ring at Tiffany's recently with what media mogul? Ilsa. Ted Turner. Ted Turner's right for six hundred dollars. Want to move ahead to the others? Pass. Pass those? All right. <laughs> Fair enough. I was a little disappointed. I thought maybe oh. I'd get one there. I knew. On and off Broadway and bad ideas for novels are the choices. What's your pick? Let's go with bad ideas. All right. Check it out. We have Lunch at Tiffany's, Gone with the Rain, <laughs> and Catch 23. These are all bad ideas for novels. Pick one, please. Make a wager. And there we go. $300 question, Ilsa and uh, Glenn. Truman Capote often did lunch but he wrote about an earlier meal and titled his book, Breakfast at Tiffany's. The book's major character is Holly who? Ilsa? Golightly. Golightly is right for $300 for four, Stan. A book with the title Gone with the Rain probably would have gone down the drain, but a book titled Gone with the Wind became a huge success. Who wrote it? Mitchell. That's right, Margaret Mitchell was the author. We only have one of them left here, so let me review what the questions deal with. We have new musicals for $300, old musicals for four, and Shakespearean classics for $500. Select your specialty and wager. All right, two of you going for the old musicals. We'll move there in a moment. Ilsa, you have the $300 new musical question. Name the musical opening next year that will be produced by Cameron McIntosh and will star Jonathan Price. Miss Saigon. That's right, for $300. Stan and Glenn for four. Try to remember the title of the musical which has been running in New York for over 30 years and features the song, Try to Remember. Glenn? The Fantastics. Fantastics is right. You got it. Now, this means we're about ready to move into the final challenge of the day. You'll be able to wager any or all of the monies in your account on the one final question of your choice. And at the moment, we have a very, very good race. Two people in there at $1,800, Glenn at $1,200, and this is something you're not going to want to miss when we come back right after this on The Challenger. All players today receive a Citibank Visa account with all the distinct benefits and exclusive services that make it America's most widely used Visa card. And now let's get back to The Challengers and here's your host, Dick Clark. Thank you, Don Morrow. And here we go. The final challenge category is... Thoughts on war and peace. Let's reveal the questions at even odds. First of all, we have be prepared. You can double your wager on never a good war and triple it with peace between equals. You'll have 15 seconds to select your question to make your final wager of the day. The money you have in front of you now, 1,800, 1,800, and 1,200 is yours respectively, so you want to gamble it carefully at the same time, trying to position yourself so that you head off the competition. The challenge is now yours. All right, all of the players' choices have been locked in. Uh, Glenn, I think we'll start with you. You've got the $1,200 in your account. How did you elect to play it? I was a real gambler. I bet the whole 1,200 on triple the odds. Okay, very good. Let's see how it holds up. Uh, Stan, you got $1,800 in the till. Where do you go? Sorry, Glenn. Uh. Peace between equals $1,800. Oh, he's doing the whole deal on the same question. Stan, so far, has it. 
Ilsa, I don't know, you've got the same amount of money. Where are you going to go? I am very careful. I bet $200 on be prepared. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Glenn, that means uh, you're out in the cold, I'm afraid. And uh, I've got to remind these other folks that uh, one of these uh, folks will be facing the ultimate challenge today and a chance at $10,000 bonus money. Glenn, no matter what the outcome here is, uh, Ilsa would win if, if, if even if Stan fell yes. down. So you're going to have to be content with your $1,200. That's the, fine. The race is still on. Let's <laughs> check them out here now. Ilsa, let's uh, go to the board and figure out what you uh, gambled. Well, your $200 at even odds gives you a grand total of $2,000 on the subject of be prepared. So stand by. In the first annual address to both houses of Congress, this American president declared to be prepared for war is one of the most effectual means of preserving peace. For $2,000, name him. I'm just gonna have to say Franklin Roosevelt. No, uh, we would have allowed you to finish, but that was not the right answer. It was George Washington. Okay. That means you've got $1,600. It's still a nice uh, piece of change, if uh, I can put it that way. And Stan, here you go. This is peace between equals. You gambled it all at three times the odds, a grand total of $7,200 or nothing. Poised on the brink of war, an American president stated to the Senate, it must be a peace without victory. Only a peace between equals can last. $7,200, name him. Lincoln? No, Woodrow Wilson, Stan, I'm sorry. Ilsa? Oh my goodness! Oh my God. You did it! You are, you're going to the ultimate challenge in a moment. That's that you with your two hundred dollar bet. You pulled it off. And Stan, you leave us with one hundred and twelve thousand four hundred and eighty dollars in accumulated earnings over the period. Congratulations! Thank you. Great job, Glenn. Thank you, sir, very much. Enjoy your twelve hundred and good health. And now it is time for the ultimate challenge. Ilsa, if you'll meet me right down there, it'll be worth ten thousand dollars. Two hundred dollar bet, and you're here. Now, did you really think that was going to happen? No idea. <laughs> you said you played it conservatively. This is the wildest thing in your imagination. You're about to try for a $10,000 ultimate challenge. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Turn to the video wall, and we'll reveal a couple of categories there. And they are British history and unusual women. Which one of these do you want to try? I'm going to try British history. British history. All right. If you will, face me this way. I'm going to step over there. I'll caution the audience. Remember, this is worth $10,000. So please... If you know the answer, or if you think any, just don't say anything, all right? You ready? Yes. Okay. British history. King Edward VIII's abdication in 1936 made him the only British sovereign ever voluntarily to resign the crown. In so doing, he surrendered to the prime minister saying, I have found it impossible to discharge my duties as king without the support of the woman I love. For $10,000, name the prime minister who secured Edward's abdication, and you'll have five seconds. Think about it. So this answer is worth $10,000? I want to say Neville Chamberlain. I'm afraid if you say that, it'll be wrong. Oh, the wow. answer is Stanley Baldwin. It's a tough question, worth 10000 but i got to encourage you now. This is not the end of it. For a lady who wagered $200 and ended up here with the big question of the day for 10000 it's not over. You go here until you fail. As you know, on the challenges, you just continue along. Stan's a very fine example of a man who picked up, what was it, $112,000 and, and some other change, $480, I think. 
but you have the same opportunity. You'll be back tomorrow. We'll bring in two new challengers. I don't know exactly where they're going to place you over there, but in any case, either you'll feel comfortable, you'll be used to the lights and all, so we'll see you tomorrow. I'm looking forward to okay. it. Okay, sleep tight. We'll see you tomorrow on the challengers, when once again, somebody will go for $10,000 right here. For now, Dick Clark. <laughs> now, we have to stay here for a minute. Some contestants today will receive How do you get the taste of chocolate with only 8 calories? With sugar-free cocoa mint, a great chocolate taste from Velaments. And now by Armatron, stunning fashion-forward designs that combine the latest upscale styling with outstanding value. Armatron America's Watch. And new Niagara Professional Finish Heavy Spray Starch for that fresh-from-the-cleaners look. And get your whole wash fresh and clean at a refreshingly low price. Arm & Hammer Laundry Detergents Liquid or Powder from the Freshness Experts. And Ferrero Rocher, the nutty, crunchy, smooth and crispy milk chocolate experience. With Ferrero Rocher, expect the unexpected. Space out this afternoon at 4 on Star Trek The Next Generation. Today, in the last outpost, the crew is held captive by a bunch of unfriendly aliens. Where is E.T. when you need him? Now, we've got a group of people who are very, very friendly. They're the young and the restless. Next. The Challengers is a Ron Greenberg production in association with Dick Clark Productions. <laughs>